Welcome to Batshit Badasses. Badasses. August 4th, 2023. Yeah. Batshit Badasses are the people who have written in who want to share their experiences with us or ask us questions. And you're all fucking amazing. So we wanted to acknowledge you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We also have a little bit of a special uh, edition at the end of this episode. We'll be discussing some of the poll results. Amazing we've poll results. Um, <laughs> amazing. I'm really excited about these because I haven't looked at them. Only Brad has. So yeah. I'm kind yeah. of excited about the ones he's going to share with us. <laughs> uh, but let's go through the batshit badasses first. All right. So the first person we're going to talk about is an amazing person named Hannah. And Hannah found us when her husband was hospitalized with full-blown psychosis. And I'm sorry for that, Hannah. I'm sorry that's what led you to us, but I'm glad you found us because this is a community of people who are here to support you and to love you and know that it cannot be easy for the partners of the people who are sick like we are. No, no. It's it's in many ways harder on you guys yeah i totally agree i think that it is on us and 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 what they say is that they're very grateful for the way that we handle this with humor and with grace and the fact that they said we grace? were graceful yeah we <laughs> handle this with grace i mean hey why not right <laughs> but uh i mean yeah i mean humor is how that's our lifeline that's our buoy right without it we're fucked Oh, God, are we? Okay, but I'm glad that it's helped you uh, because you writing in and doing stuff like that helps us. So thank you. Uh, keep fighting. Uh, keep staying strong for your husband. I know he appreciates it, even if it's hard for him sometimes to show you. And make sure you get any help you need. Exactly, exactly. Uh, next person would prefer not to be named, so we're just going to call them uh, Cleopatra. I like Cleopatra. So Cleopatra wrote in um, and really said thank you because it's helping them understand what their husband is going through and that, you know, they're start they're starting to see things because they had a child. And, you know, when that happened, a lot of this disorder became more prevalent and, you know, like hindsight being 2020, they started seeing some of the symptoms and now it's become, you know, fully immersed in it. But what's really tough for Cleopatra is their husband doesn't want to acknowledge the disease. Oh. And that sucks. Because we've talked about this in previous episodes. It's like you, the people who are standing beside, the people who are mentally ill, you have to take care of yourself as much as you take care of the person who is mentally ill. And if you can't share your pain with him, like Cleopatra says, you know, how are you going to get healthy? Yeah. How are you going to stay safe? How are you going to be able to help your little one? You know what? Cleopatra and anybody out there in a similar situation, just play your significant other this. Hey, buddy. (laughs) Hey, man. This is Adam and Brad. How's it going? Shit. Yeah, you're great. We've been there. Yeah. We're a couple of guys who had a really hard time accepting that there was something wrong with us. Yeah. But you know what? We had to because it was starting to wreck our lives and to hurt the people who were important to us. Yeah. And even now that we've acknowledged it, it's still wrecking our lives. It's just that the people in our lives are on our side and fighting along with us. Right. And we're fighting together instead of fighting against each other. Yeah. It's so much easier to push this boulder up a hill when someone's standing beside you and pushing along with you. And it doesn't mean that you're weak Mm-mm. to have this. No. It just means you got it. Yeah. If you got a broken leg, no one's going to call you a wimp because you need help getting around. Right. Be that with crutches or someone holding you up, putting their arm underneath yours. But you know what? If you refuse to use the crutches or to let someone help walk you around and you're just kind of constantly stumbling and falling into things, everybody will think you're an idiot and they'll make fun of you for it. Yeah. No one likes to be made fun of. Right. And you know what? Unfortunately... That's probably what's happening to you right now. It is. Because everybody else around you can see these these things in you, and they don't know what they are. Yeah. And so go get help. Figure out how to deal with it, and let the people around you know what you end up diagnosed with. Yeah. Be, yeah. Be, and at the end of this awesome uh, email they sent us, 
they asked us things like, how did we come to accept our bipolar? How did we talk to our wives about it? Will the gaslighting, deflecting ever stop? And honestly, Cleopatra, I, I can't tell you one way or another because I don't know your husband. But what I do know is if he starts fighting, if he starts working towards bettering himself and making himself healthier and thus your relationship healthier, acceptance will come. And yeah, you know, and you know, for me, the the gaslighting and deflection stopped when I got diagnosed mm -hmm. because I didn't even realize I was doing it. Right. Because it was it was as much gaslighting myself yep. as it was anybody else. And then the second I got diagnosed, I was able to sit down and, and just be like, hey, here's what's going on with yeah. me. And now you can talk to your wives about it or you can talk to your friends about it. And mm -hmm. at the end of the day, I like that you pluralized wives. Well, I mean, you could be this person, <laughs> yeah. Utah, probably monogamous. I'm not, I'm not here to judge. I'm not yucking anyone's yum. You know what? Um, but at the end of the day, Cleopatra, it doesn't come down to you. It comes down to him. So you got to be with someone who wants to change and be healthy. Yeah. And if they refuse to do that, I mean, there's only so much you can do. Yeah. And you know what? I'll say this again for uh, any, any, especially of the men listening who refuse to acknowledge that they might have a problem. Yeah. It takes a lot of strength to acknowledge that you have a problem and yep. do the work to, to try to make it better. Yeah. So, you know, be strong. Keep, yeah, be strong. Be, be a strong man. Uh, okay, next person is an amazing person named Chloe who feels seen and loves our comedic take on her illness. Well, we're a couple of clowns, so <laughs> it makes sense that our take is uh, comedic. But um, this Chloe has an amazing supportive person in her life that has helped her get through what's going on with her, you know, and the she now has an idea i'm sorry let me let me rephrase that because that that didn't come out correctly um so chloe has bipolar and she has supportive people in her life that are helping her get through it and the podcast which is this is very flattering has helped her be more open about her illness with other people and connect with others about it and that's awesome for you chloe you're a fucking badass the fact that you are creating community and you are helping other people talk about how they might be feeling you're only paying it forward you're only helping you know promote the cause of mental health so thank you i mean i'm i'm glad that our, our you know our podcast has made it feel less daunting and that something that you can accept and embrace um but you're the badass and and don't forget that amen Amen. Uh, okay. We have a voice memo that I want to play from a guy named Daniel. So I will play it now. Hey, guys. This is Dan. I have ADHD, but I have a nephew who is a 40-year-old man who has bipolar too. I was wondering if you guys could do an episode for those of us who are friends and family, not just how we can support our relatives and friends, but how we could also understand some of their actions, because that's my biggest thing. Sometimes I can't parse out between what's bipolar and what's my nephew. All right, guys. Thanks. Keep up the good work. Talk to you soon. Bye. Dan, thank you so much for that awesome voicemail. And that's a great suggestion, I think. Yeah. Because we talk about that a lot on other episodes mm -hmm. and on these batshit badasses. Uh, and I think that's something that deserves its own episode. Yeah. Like trying to figure out how to understand what your your friend or your partner or your, your family member is going through. That's a great idea, Dan. And we're going to look at that. We're going to look at doing an episode about that. We did just do an episode... Uh, which hasn't been released yet, called um, Assholes or Illness, which where yeah. we discuss whether or not we're assholes, which we are, or whether it's the illness that's causing us to be asshole-ish. But what you said about not knowing where, what's the bipolar and what's your nephew, we talk about that a lot on that episode. Yeah, but, but even then, it, it's very hard, obviously, being, like you said, you have ADHD, and ADHD is its own fight. But it doesn't have the same symptoms as bipolar. So trying to figure that out, for yeah. lack of a better term. For, yeah. There's a little bit of overlap. There is some. There's some definitely the symptoms, some. But, but yeah, like 
trying to understand, for instance, the grandiosity right, right. that comes with mania. Yeah, it's like you both love rock and roll in the 80s, right? But like your nephew loves Warrant and you're like, what? And you're like, into rat. Yeah, or, or Journey. <laughs> Maybe yeah, you're a journey you guy. Go. You're a journey, journey guy, and he's in the warrant. He's and you're warrant, like, I yeah. kind of understand, but I don't understand. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's like, there's no Steve Perry vocals over <laughs> there. What are you doing, man? <laughs> um, but no, that's a great idea. That's a, we should do that, and we will do that. Um, it's something to wrap our head around. But uh, thank you, Dan. It's a great suggestion, and we definitely will. Uh, okay, next person. Uh, this person's name is... Jorge or George. And what I love about this is his first line is like, my English isn't sharp. I'm like, bro, I totally knew what you were saying from the minute that you started writing. So your English is awesome. But they wanted to talk to us because they were in a relationship with someone who had bipolar two, And that was really hard for them. And, you know, uh, the, the I don't know if the relationship worked out or not. I don't. I'm not 100 percent sure. It doesn't look like it. But either way, um, they wanted to thank our podcast because it's helping them understand what their partner was going through at the time. And what they suggested we do was do an episode about memory loss because that's something that they've experienced and they're curious about it. And and that's something we've actually talked about quite a bit. Yeah. Because it's a symptom right of the bipolar and it's it's super painful it's super painful for us it's super painful for the people in our lives it's super confusing super confusing and it's in no way uh, malicious like it's not intent it, we didn't it, we don't intentionally forget yeah <laughs> that's not why we yeah. do yeah um but Jorge, that's a great suggestion uh thank you so much for writing in again your your english is great so keep writing in english or spanish if you want um either way thank you for listening uh keep listening and we're gonna get to that episode it's a great idea okay next we've got jade such a cool name um so jade has bipolar 2 and bpd and they like me have suffered more from the depression part of it and have we ever had issues with anxiety or obsessive thoughts is what they asked. And Jade, you'll be pleased to know that because of your uh, email to us, we have recorded an entire episode on this topic that yep. we'll be dropping soon. It's four hours long. We're <laughs> super obsessed about it. <laughs> and we're super anxious about your thoughts. No. Yeah. <laughs> no, but exactly because of this email. And like, and here's the thing. If any of you out there have questions or you want us to discuss a, an aspect of our disease, please write in. Like, that's why we did an episode uh, about obsession. That's why we're going to do an episode about memory loss. Yeah. Because these people who are listening have these questions. Please write in, and we'll just share our thoughts. And Yeah, because I was experience. just telling Adam, we have some interviews coming up, and Adam was like, like I like our interviews, but, but our – you know, banter back and forth is, is really good. And I was like, yeah, I like the interviews because I'm constantly low key afraid that we're going to run out of things to talk about. One day. <laughs> uh, no, I mean, <laughs> so I, send us suggestions. But, I, but, I, but like, I get that. Right. Because, but, that, but that's also part of who we are as artists is we're like, how interesting are we? Like how much do yeah. people really want to listen to us blather on about our problems? <laughs> so the fact that you guys like to hear about our problems is very nice. Um, but yeah, let us know if there's something that uh, you want us to discuss or if you have questions about. We'll do our best to either answer them in yeah. a batch of badasses episode or we'll do a whole episode about you or the symptom you ask about. Yeah. Okay, next we got Cammy. Um, wow. Cammy's, Cammy's going through a lot and that's not easy, Cammy. The, the, so Cammy starts her her email with i have never in my life heard a podcast that is related to me and my fucked up life <laughs> I was like, yeah me too cammy you're you're right there with us <laughs> welcome aboard yeah. hop, hop on the train uh cammy's got three children they're struggling with ex-husbands that are going through manic episodes and like they are constantly fighting and cammy you're a fucking soldier Amen. Like the fact that you're still vertical and you're still like pushing forward. And I know you got three kids and you're fighting for them, but you're also fighting for yourself. Um, 
good for you. Don't fucking quit. Keep going. Yeah. Keep going. They also said this amazing thing where they're like, look, uh, I actually used MDMA in my therapy and it helped her leave her abusive husband. Oh, wow. So like, yeah, fucking A. Good for you, Cammy. You know why? It's probably mm-hmm. that, that whole thing. She was able to open up without shame. There you and go. And talk about what was going on in her marriage. Awesome. See, so, Brad didn't talk about anything interesting when he was on no, MDMA. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Brad. I'd tell you what I talked about, but it's sex rated. <laughs> but Ayo. Ayo. So, Cammy, thank you for writing in. Uh, good for you for fucking fighting as hard as you're fighting. I know you're fighting yeah. not being triggered by your surroundings and what and you you're know going why? through. The fact you're there for your kids while all this is going on, That's, you're a badass. You're a badass right there, you know. Uh, good for you because God knows the, the kids can't take care of themselves, which is a shame. Like, yeah. they need to step it up. Yeah. Those lazy kids. Fucking lazy kids. <laughs> what is going on with kids today? Kids today. All right. We have uh, a person named Vanessa who wrote in. And they talk about they have a husband who's bipolar one. And one of the things that they brought up is they haven't been the best wife in reacting to his bipolar one. And I'm going to say this, Vanessa. The fact that you're still his wife is a pretty great reaction. Yeah. Like that in and of itself. And she says, she's like, I'm never giving up on him, you know, and it helped after he's, uh, he got his diagnosis to make sense of his behavior. But the fact that you're still there by his side and you love this man and you're taking, you know, you're, you're fighting with him. You're by his side during this really painful time. That's badass, badass. You know, it's like you have made the choice because you know who this man is and who how special he is to continue fighting beside him. And that takes a lot of strength that a lot of people in this world do not have. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, you're still you're still learning what his behaviors are, what his triggers are. Mm-hmm. You're learning how to navigate it. You're learning how to be there for him. And you're probably learning how to be there for yourself and how to manage your own health yeah. doing this because you have to. Yeah. And it's it's interesting because she even states at one point that like she's pretty sure their relationship blossomed during a manic episode he was having. And yeah. I and I get that, right? Because we that's talked when, about that a lot. Yeah, we're in our most like charismatic state and yeah. like least assholeness. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and you're 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 primed, all those chemicals firing, you're just primed for love. Yeah, primed for love. Which is the name of my new reality show. It's gonna be great. Prime for love. That's amazing. I'd watch that show. Where it's it's The Bachelor, but with Optimus Prime. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was gonna be a bunch of mathematicians. Fine, oh, fine, that'd fine. be good too. Also yeah. fun, finding prime. Yeah. Um Another interesting thing they bring up, because we talk about the healthcare system here in Los uh, America quite a bit, uh, they live in Canada, and they talk about how, like, if you're low income in Canada, it is rough for getting mental health coverage. Like, three years ago, they say a manic episode could land someone in jail. But now, but now they're escorting them to the hospital. And so... You know, as much as we uh, harp on the American mental health system, it's not just here where no, they got to fucking figure it's it out. A, it's in a lot of places. Yeah. It's in a lot of places. And, you know, she's saying, like, it's very understaffed. And I'm like, yeah, it's very understaffed yeah. here, too. It's Well, you know, you see all those those uh, instances where someone calls 911 for help with, say, like a mentally ill child, mm-hmm. like a teenager in the cops show up and end up shooting the kid. Right, yeah. You know? Fucking terrifying. Yeah, because police are not equipped to deal with this. Hell, we're barely equipped to deal yeah. with this. Um, I mean, yeah, they're, they're talking about in this how, like, he can see a psychiatrist once every three months and then a psych nurse for 20 minutes twice a week. It's like, that's not enough help or support. Like, not no, at all. not at all. You know, it, it's like... N- he has no mania plan because he hasn't even figured out his triggers yet because he's still figuring out what the fuck all this is. And it's every three months yeah, to see a psychiatrist. Like, oh, my Damn. God. It's fucking terrible. Um, well, I mean, not that we're doctors or – We're not? Uh, or, <laughs> I thought I was a doctor. You're a sex doctor. Oh, thanks, buddy. <laughs> thanks, buddy. But, uh, you know, I mean – Get them listening to this. Get them listening to other podcasts. Yeah, find watching a com- YouTube videos. Yeah, I mean, find some community. Try. Yeah, it can't replace 
having a good psychiatrist and a good therapist, but at least at least it can give him some information. Maybe the next time he has to meet with one of the nurses or with a psychiatrist, have him ask if there is a support group. Yeah. Like there might be a support group in the area. It sounds like there's a desperate need for one. And have him plug our show to the nurse or something. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's just hand him our business card. No, but do do that. I mean, like, there are people who have uh, written in other badasses who have found online support communities, not only for people who are ill, but for the spouses of those who are ill. So take full advantage of that if you can. And, yeah. Keep- Which, by the way, on that note, mm-hmm. uh, a lot of people have been responding to the question on the last episode that we released would you be interested in an in-person batshit badasses meetup group? Oh, really? And that uh, that they, they're they excited about the idea of it. Oh, that's Again, an I've, interesting idea. I have no idea how the hell we'll implement Yeah, how this. the hell would we do that? <laughs> but, we go on like a bad shit badasses tour? Like we tour <laughs> lots? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I guess we'd start local. Uh, so we have to go local. Yeah. Uh, see how many... Well, I mean, there's, total, uh, there's a bunch of bad shit fucks in Los Angeles. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure some of them listen to our goddamn yeah. podcast. Yeah. Uh, it's hilarious. <laughs> um, uh, Vanessa, you're a badass. Don't stop. Don't give up. Keep fighting. Uh, all right, Brad. What What do you got? All right. So we've got a uh, few people I wanted to call out who commented on some episodes. Uh, our uh, Borderline Personality Disorder episode with um, Lauren Melisi. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, R.S. Miller uh, and One in a Million. Uh, replied to the question, what are some of your coping mechanisms? Oh, okay, yeah. Um, R.S. Miller uh, likes to go outside. Okay, just, just get just, into nature, yeah, kind of. Yeah. Be outside, go for a walk. Uh, one in a million finds uh, tasks to do around the house. I'm right so. there with you, one in a million. Like fa- finding that kind of like something that you can accomplish, yeah. right? Like something where you can see progress. Like that's huge. It's a great idea. On our uh, sex episode, the question was, how do you deal with your hypersexuality? Mm-hmm. Christy responded uh, that she masturbates to keep from cheating. Well, you know what? You know? <laughs> Success. <laughs> Good yep. for you, Christy. You know what? I mean, you know, not not out of cheating, but I think, you know, we, we you know. Yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, who doesn't every once in a while? I mean. We're there with you. You know, Christy, you. Christy, at the end of the day, if, you know, that you're saving your marriage. Good for you. <laughs> Save the hell out of it. Save it. Save it as much as you need to save it. <laughs> uh, on our drugs episode, mm. uh, we asked, uh, what drugs have you used to self-medicate? Scuba Steve does morphine. Interesting. Or did until he ran out. And then he ran And now he does alcohol. Well, but, w- w- wait a minute. Does that, does that suggest he had like a supply of morphine? I'm guessing. He got like, like canisters of morphine? Maybe, Where did you get those, maybe, Scuba Steve? Maybe he was a burn victim or maybe. something. <laughs> I don't know. Scuba Steve, I actually like the idea that like Scuba Steve had a bunch of oxygen tanks. <laughs> but, but filled he... with morphine. <laughs> <laughs> so he'd like go on a dive and it's like, I haven't seen Steve in a while. I hope he comes back up. <laughs> guys, the colors down here. The colors are fucking amazing, you guys. <laughs> uh, but I mean, um, I'm not going to say great job switching from morphine to alcohol, but I totally but get it. Steve. I, I guess. As we, dr- as we drink, as we do this. Yeah. Uh, I scotch, get it. Scotch, scotch. <laughs> Scotchy scotch. scotch. Um, By the way, we've only recently started recording, and I keep getting distracted because I never look at myself, and I feel like I have like sad hound dog eyes. So goddamn beautiful! It's just <laughs> no, so goddamn no. I feel like I look like a cartoon hound dog. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. I mean, well, like I'm just like what was that droop, what was his name Droopy Dog? Droopy Dog. <laughs> droopy Dog. <laughs> droopy Dog in the episode. Yeah, yeah. That's the worst things to be. <laughs> Uh, Scuba Steve, thank you for sharing that with us. Uh, that's super, the morphine. Like, morphine, yeah. Like, yeah, I mean, wow. First of all, I wonder how you got access to that or if it was just heroin. Um, super curious. Interesting. Um, cool, Steve. Thank yeah, write us, Steve, and tell us how to score some yeah, more. Yeah, how you do that, Steve? Why don't you just, you know, send us a little D, some door DM, Steve. Let us know what's up. So, uh, as promised, I also wanted to read some of our poll results. Yes, yes, We've been yes. running polls since our first episode. So, I didn't. I actually didn't know Brad was doing this initially. Like, I like I did. Like, this, it was the one part of the podcasting element. He handles all the writing, like the descriptions of the things, and like the pot and like the uh, posts and all that. And I handle like the I record stuff and I post the actual episodes. That like, he handles all the descriptions and like these. Uh, uh, what are they called? These, uh, These polls? Polls. So I'm, su- I'm super curious. All right. So this is from our first episode. Mm. 
Who would make a worse dinner guest? Mm. Adam or Brad? Uh oh. I win with 92% of the vote. <laughs> 92% oh my God. agreed that I would be the worst dinner guest. You'd be the worst dinner guest. <laughs> Why do you think that is? Like, you, I don't know. Like, you show up without pants on? Like, what would it be? Well, you know, in the first episode, we were talking about, like, my extreme mania. That's true. From Bipolar 1, which I, I didn't know I was type 1 yet. So I guess I guess I would seem like... <laughs> That's fair. I uh, that, Thank you for that worst. ego boost, listeners, yeah. that I'd make a good dinner to guess. And you know what, motherfuckers? I cook, so I would bring something. <laughs> I would not show up empty-handed. So yeah, I would make an amazing dinner. Well, the ego boost will continue, Adam, because the <laughs> poll for uh, Bad Ooh. Shit Episode 2 okay. was, who do you think would be more obnoxious, game show Adam or actor Brad? And I win with 78% of the vote. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, you know what's funny is like, because when, when I, I picture these like versions of us, and I picture me in like a bad like seersucker suit with like the long microphone that Bob Barker used to have. Yeah. But I picture you in like a really tight t-shirt with like your hair blowing in the wind. So I, I get that. Like I get that response yeah. to the poll. Yeah. Uh, I'm doing great. Keep going. These polls are great. <laughs> So from episode three, would you stay in a manic state if you could? 70% said yes. Yeah. It's amazing. Fucking yeah, they would. Yeah. I, I had a conversation with a buddy of mine who listens to the podcast, and he he was he was kind of taken back by the fact that I was like, oh, I totally stay in a manic state. And uh, yeah, it feels amazing. Yeah. It feels absolutely outstanding. Yeah, while you're in it? Yeah. Oh, God. Oh, my God. Yeah. Especially if you don't know you're in it. Yeah. Because I will say that once I realized and got diagnosed, now I recognize a manic state when I'm in it. And you kind of freak out. And you're like, ah, shit, I should stop. But before then, I was like, I'm amazing. Top of the world. I mean, like I equated it on the first episode. It's like you're doing Coke and Molly for a week straight. God bless. You know? Yep. It's. Remember, Morphine Steve, call us. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) You're no longer Scuba Steve. You're Morphine Steve. So from episode four, mm. have you destroyed a relationship because of your mental illness? Uh, oh, you asked people this. Yeah. I thought you were asking no. me. And I'm yeah. like, have you? Yes, <laughs> of course I have. So 27% said that they've destroyed a romantic relationship. Okay. 11% a friendship. 53% both. Yeah. And 9% no, I've been lucky. Good. For, well, first of all, good for you, 9%. Um, yeah, I... I hate that that's the results. Yeah. I hate that that's the results. Yeah. But I so get common it. though. Yeah, but I get it. Yeah. I get it. And you know what's fucked is the people that destroyed the romantic relationships probably in turn destroyed the friendship relationships like as well. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. one was almost uh, uh, a result of the other. Yeah, probably. Right? Because romantic relationships are very rarely self-contained as like friends within friends and root and Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I'm I'm sorry for you folks. I'm sorry for us too because we've yeah. done it. And for those of you who said no, fuck yeah, you. Yeah, fuck you, man. You know what? You too you think you're better than me? Is that what it is? You think you're better than me? Think you're better than me? <laughs> so from episode five, uh-huh. a little serious now. Have you ever considered suicide? Seventy six percent of people said yes. Yeah. 76%. Yeah. Uh, thank you for not. Thank you for not following through with it. Because the world is a better place with you in it. If for nothing else, the fact that you are listening to this podcast and talking about mental health and trying to make the world a better place by listening and responding to other sick people you're better than 90% of the population. And you listen to our show. So (laughs) also that part. (laughs) Uh, Thank you. Thank you for, for sticking around and fighting. Uh, You're amazing. You're a badass. So from episode six, have you experienced a negative reaction when someone learned that you were mentally ill? 88% responded. Yes, it hurt. 13% responded, yes, it was funny. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, hey, those 13%. And 0% responded no. (laughs) 
Hey, 13%, don't start a podcast. That's our bag. Don't fucking <laughs> yeah. try and jump in on our market share. Uh, no, but it's awful. It's awful that 80-something 80, 80 percent, that that's what you experience, but we get it. Yeah. We get it. It sucks. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We we don't respond negatively. Tell us tell us all you're crazy. We're down to hear about it. Yeah. Write us. We're here. Leave to us hear. voicemails. I love the voicemails. We, yeah, we love the voicemails so much. Yeah. You guys, please, please leave us more. Of yeah, those. I mean, don't get me wrong. Your words, your words help convey how you're feeling and what you're going through. But the voices that we hear humanize it. Yeah. Yeah. And if you're listening to this on uh, Apple Music or Google um, or any any other formats. That's uh, not Spotify. Yeah. The, uh, <laughs> the link to leave us a voicemail is uh, on spotify which is free you can just log in on your your web browser I mean, yeah not even log in just go on your web browser look for our podcast click the link off of that and leave us a voicemail yes leave us a voicemail be awesome thank you from episode seven have you or your partner experienced postpartum or perinatal depression 83 percent said yes it's a serious problem that no one talks about yeah i'm so glad we had maggie on for that yeah, that was a good episode. If you guys haven't listened, you should you should check it out. Yeah, even if you, you know, like I haven't had kids. So, but it was really interesting to hear the perspective. Because yeah. if Mandy and I do have kids, you know, I want to be as informed as I can. So, from episode 8, we'll just do a couple more of these and then check out. Uh, have you had to tell a new partner about your illness? Oh fuck. 75% said yes. Ah. Uh... And that couldn't have been easy. Oh, my God. It's hurt so much. I haven't been single in a long time, and I was not diagnosed when I was single. But I can only imagine the difficulty of that. Like, that's got to be so fucking hard. You barely know this person. Yeah. Two months, three months in, you're like, oh, by the way, I have this disorder, which may cause me to disappear into my room for two months or go to Vegas and spend all my savings. So and that's the big question. When do you reveal that? Yeah, you know, because then you're you don't know this person, not really, not yeah. yet. So you have to make a judgment call, and that's fucking hard. Yeah, that is not easy. We're yeah. uh, we're very sympathetic to you. Very folks. sympathetic. All right, from episode nine, CPTSD, where we interviewed Christy Wampler. By the way, it's crazy to me that we're only on episode nine of these of these poll results because mm -hmm. it, it still blows our mind how many episodes of these that we've done. Because yeah, like yeah, I mean we're in the twenties on episodes. Yeah, it's nuts. Sorry, keep going. <laughs> uh, do you or someone you know suffer from a form of PTSD? Uh, yes, I do. Eighty-seven percent. Yes, I know someone. Thirteen percent. Wow. No, zero percent. Wow. So that's how many people out there are suffering from a form of PTSD. Yeah, man. And we're not, and you know, when people say PTSD, they think military, and I understand why they do, but PTSD can take a lot of forms from a lot of different sources. Yeah. So acknowledging it and dealing with it. I mean, you know, when we had Lauren Malisi on, uh, she didn't go into detail about it, um, but, uh, but, you know, she intimated that her PTSD came from sexual assault. Sure. Um, you know, which is probably pretty common. Yeah, um, I would unfortunately, imagine so. Unfortunately. That's, which is fucking awful. Uh, recognize, recognize the fact that if you've suffered something, that it's okay for you to feel traumatized by it and to deal with it. And, and normal, really, to it's feel normal. traumatized by it. Yeah. Yeah. Normalize that shit. I mean, don't normalize the reason you feel the way you do oh god what no. they fucking god, no. did yeah. but normalize that you're okay to have the reaction that you had from episode 11 our episode of masculinity this is a fun one which man would be most likely to see a therapist wait between like me and you no 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 oh dalton from roadhouse 22 percent. jesse ventura in predator 22 percent. <laughs> john wayne 22 percent. i don't think john wayne would see i don't therapist. think he would either and the winner with 33% of the vote, Arnold Schwarzenegger. The Schwartz. Yeah, he would. He yeah, would totally. He would totally, totally go. He totally would. I mean, uh, I completely agree with that. But I love how even it is. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, with everyone pretty, else. It's pretty. Because really, when you think about it, I think Dalton from Roadhouse would probably be most likely, in my opinion. You think so? More than I Arnold so. Schwarzenegger? Yeah, because Dalton's very, he's very in touch with 
you know. Because of the hair? Yeah, I think so. Because of the hair. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> but he's also grown up in the, like that Southern culture. Like, that's not easy. Or he was oh, working. Oh, that's true. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, Schwarzenegger was here in Los Angeles, and there's a lot more open communication about, like, mental health. I don't know. I don't know. I, you know what? I love that there, there should be a conversation between Dalton and Arnold Schwarzenegger about mental health. <laughs> <laughs> I would watch that. P.S. I love that, like... You didn't say Patrick Swayze from no, Roadhouse. No, he was it's like the Dalton. character Dalton, yeah. but everyone else is an actual person. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, Dal- well, Dalton to me is, is a an person. actual person. He's an actual person. Yeah, uh, you're it's like, the bouncers. Like I'm Sa- the cooler, like Santa Claus to a little kid. <laughs> uh, if you haven't seen Roadhouse, go out and um, <laughs> rent it. Rent it. Uh, buy it online. I don't even. Yeah, you can't just even watch it. it. Just watch it. Just watch find, the damn. Thing. Find a way to watch it. It's it's a masterpiece. We should do a Roadhouse episode. <laughs> we should. This episode has nothing to do with mental health. We're just we going to talk about we Roadhouse. We're going to talk about Roadhouse and how it shaped us as men. Um, so, uh, last one. This last is one. just for you, Adam. Oh, really? From episode 15. Do you remember your dreams? Oh, crap. Uh, only 63% of people remember their dreams. 30, okay. 38% do not. I so. feel seen. I feel seen. Um it's funny because ever since we've had that episode, I've asked more and more people about, just curious, like, do you remember their dreams? I do feel like I'm in the minority. Yeah. I do feel like us 33 percenters, 38 percenters, whatever you said it was, are in the minority about that. Yeah. And I don't know why. But that's still a bigger group than I would have imagined. Oh, really? Yeah. I would have thought most people remember their dreams. Right. And then there's just but, us weird but that's in the, Yeah, in but the, that's more than a shadows. third. Yeah, it's more than a third. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you, that third of you who um, are doing, uh, going through what I'm going through. And how many of you who remember your dreams dream of Roadhouse? <laughs> yeah, please. <laughs> That's what I want to know. <laughs> That's going to be a new poll that Brad's going to put out about, like, do you dream of Roadhouse? <laughs> do you dream of polar bears falling on you? <laughs> um, thank you, badasses, for being badasses. Thank you, everyone who listens and hasn't written in, but please do write in because we love you and we love the fact that you're so committed to uh, embracing and all we, of this. We love getting your messages. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We, we read every single one. Remember that you are making us feel seen as much as we are making you feel seen. Yeah. Yeah. Don't Don't forget that. You're as much a part of this journey with us as we are with you. Yeah, so remember to uh, like, subscribe, leave reviews, yeah. share send us it with, messages, share, share it with people. people. Like, put it wherever you want, Facebook, Reddit, YouTubes, mm-hmm. uh, the TikToks. <laughs> um, we're trying to do social media stuff now, not because we want to be on social media, because God damn it, we don't, but because <laughs> it's a way to get it out there. Yeah. <clears throat> so please, share us. And by the way, if you see us doing social media stuff and it's wrong or not not efficient or there's a better way to do it please write us and tell us (laughs) how to fix it because again don't know what we're doing we don't with anything with anything yeah if you have any life advice (laughs) we'll take it can you yeah just you know email us (laughs) yeah we love you thank you keep fighting